how's your screaming? Uh, I'm still screaming. You're still screaming. When you scream, you just go like this. <laughs> just cover your mouth when you scream. Um, okay, well, keep praying. But um, since we're all here today, I think. Uh, I should probably follow up with her. She's actually doing like some real thing. Um, I guess we can start. James, can you open us in for me, please? Hello, hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. All right. Let's close our eyes, bow our heads. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, we just truly want to give you all the praise and glory, oh, Lord. Um, we just want to thank you for this. Uh, another day, Lord. Um, another day to uh, learn more about you, Lord. Um, to have our Bible study, oh Lord. We just want to thank you for each and everyone's lives, oh Lord. Um, for joining our uh, online Bible study, Lord. We just truly um are blessed, oh Lord. As we learn more about you, oh Lord. Um, may you sit beside us, sit beside us, oh Lord, and your Holy Spirit be with us, oh Lord, throughout the night. And as you continue use the life of Creator John to teach you. Lord, um, may you continually bless his life, continually use him, O oh Father, and the words that will be coming out of his mouth, O oh Lord, may it be yours, O oh Lord, and um, that it will be planted in good soil and put into good use into our daily lives, O oh Lord. We just also want to pray for the life of Kriya RJ, who hasn't been able to attend, O oh Lord, um, you know, um, he's going through right now, O oh Father, um, we pray that you are, you guide him, O oh Lord, and continually be with him, Father, and that we have her, uh, Next Bible study, O oh Lord, he'll be able to join us, O oh Father. Yes. And Lord, um, he always with us throughout this O oh Lord, as we pray. Amen. Amen. So last week, as a recap of what um, we discussed, do you remember what we talked about last week, Philip? Uh, no, no, I don't remember. You don't remember. So last week... We talked about the power of our words and how life and death is in the power of our tongue. So today, what I want to talk about, well, as I lead into what we'll discuss, you know, we're October, November, December. We're only like two and a half months left in the year, right? Which is crazy to think about how time flies. With the remainder of the year, what are you expecting from God? You know, what are you expecting from God to do in your life or whatever? Like, what are you expecting from God for the remainder of the year? Let's start with you, James. What are you expecting from God? For the rest of this year? I'm expecting from God. Mm -hmm. Or like, if you are even expecting anything from God at this point, because um, yeah, I guess. Mm, ah, ah, expecting nothing really. Maybe more on. Um. Uh, a guidance to. No, how more? How much more can I um, further my my spiritual walk with him? Mm -hmm. Aside from just serving, doing you know prayers and daily devotions, mm -hmm. um, you know what else can I do? Mm -hmm. um, career wise, um, I guess that's up to me as well. But you know, it's, it's like. Yeah, I have to apply this and that, but you know, expect something that is you know according to His will, and you know, that'll be you know a great blessing as well. But aside mm -hmm. from the expect the expectation, nothing is is far exceeded my expectation of what I have. So, yeah. Okay. So. Uh... I was gonna say something. <laughs> so, so what I heard 
that's pretty much that. Although God has already exceeded all of what you do, what you're really just hoping, praying, expecting is more guidance in how to better your relationship with Him. Mm -hmm. What about you, Philip? What are you expecting from God? What are you expecting Him to do in your life for the rest of this year? The rest of the year. Uh, I think to help me to heal. To heal you? Amen. So, and the reason why I'm asking what we expect from God is because I think in order for God to move in our lives, it's important that we have expectations from Him. Because expectations display or uh, expectations show that we have faith in God, right? That we have faith that He will do what He says is going to do and that he will um, deliver on you know what he has promised so therefore we have those expectations because yeah. although like man un unlike human beings where in order to save ourselves from disappointments we therefore have little to no expectations from them it shouldn't be that way to god because we know who god is right we know that god is uh a God who stand like He delivers on His promises, like He He stands on His word, right? So, what I really wanted to talk about is yes, we've established the fact that we all have expectations from God because we have faith in Him, right? So, for me, what I'm expecting from God, I guess, what I'm looking forward to is you know a new chapter in my life, and uh, you know starting. You know, moving out, like, I can't wait. Like, I can't wait to move to yeah. a new apartment. Um, I know, James, I'm sure, like, you can't wait to for what else God is going to do in your next chapter as you yeah. find a new job, as you figure out, like, you're the next step of your own life. So we're all expecting and waiting for God to kind of take us to where he wants to take us next. Um, and so... What I wanted to talk about to me is kind of what do we do while we wait? Like what what is expected of us as we wait uh, for God to kind of answer our prayers, right? Because as we know, when we pray, God doesn't always answer us instantaneously. He doesn't answer us yeah. right away. It's not kind of... Yeah, it's not instant, it's not right away. And oftentimes, the answers to our prayers are answered during that kind of waiting period or in that development period was, is when we realize our answers. So I want us to open our Bible to Acts chapter 1. As an example, of like, what do we do when we pray? Or like, what do we do while we wait? So this... This is quite a bit of reading for it. So it will be Acts chapter 1, verse 1 to 15. So if you want to follow along as we read. Okay, let me see if I can share this. Um, Speaker. Just again. Ships. Okay. So, do you guys? Yeah. Let me try to make it bigger. Can you read it? Is it? Do you see it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see it. You see it? Okay. I don't know how clear it is, but let's look into. It 
it's actually really easy. Okay, Acts 1. Um, James, if you can read 1 to, one to 7, and then I'll finish it off from 15. Unless, <laughs> Philip, do you want to read? Are you able to read? Uh, no. No, so you cannot. No, no. no thank you. Okay. So, James, if you can go. So, verse 1. In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach. Till the day he was taken up to heaven, after giving instruction through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. Uh, verse 3. After his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to, the, to them over a period of 40 days and spoke out the kingdom of God. Verse 4. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father, my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. Speak about. Uh, verse 5. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Verse 6. Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom, the kingdom to Israel? Then verse 7, he said to them, It is not for you to know the times or, da or dates the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, and in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and the cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, Why do you stand here looking into the sky? The same Jesus, who has been taken from you into heaven, will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. Then the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the hill called the Mount of Olives, a Sabbath day's walk from the city. When they arrived, they went upstairs to the room where they were staying. Those present were Peter, John, James, and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. They all joined together constantly in prayer, along with women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brothers. In those days, Peter stood up among the believers, a group numbering about 120. So, uh, so you know what do we do while we wait? And in this case, the disciples were waiting for what? What were the disciples waiting for, and what was promised to them? Hmm. What was promised to them, and what were they waiting for? So, um, wait, what am I? They were promised. Kingdom of heaven. My loss. Verse 5. Oh, they're waiting for the Holy Spirit. So they're waiting for the Holy Spirit, right? Um, because they were promised by Jesus that, look, I'm leaving. I'm like, you know, I'm going to be gone. Or at this point, I think he was already gone. Um. Yeah, so this was Jesus' ascension. So they were, he says, look, I'm not going to be with you guys anymore, but I'm going to leave with you a helper. I'm going to leave with you the Holy Spirit, and he will give you power to do um, to do God's work, right? And so that's what was promised, and that's what they were expecting. And Jesus left some instructions to them um, as they were waiting for the Holy Spirit. And this is what we're going to learn tonight and learn from the apostles 
learn from the disciples of what to do when we also wait for whatever we are expecting from God. So as we wait for that new job, as we wait for, you know, that new chapter in our life, as we step into kind of the new chapter in our life, as we wait for um, better finances, you know, or as we wait and as we pray for healing, what is expected of us? And so I think first and foremost, um, we can agree that while we wait, it's important that we position ourselves um, for God's answered prayer. What do we mean by position ourselves? Um, if, as, if we go back to... Uh, verse 12. Verse 12, it says, Then the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the hill called the Mount of Olives. So they went back to Jerusalem. Why? Well, because Jesus said that. Um... Because Jesus said in verse 8, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. So what they had done was they already put themselves where God said he would meet them or where God said they will become witnesses. In the same way, as we wait for um god's answered prayers or god's promises in our own life it's important that we begin placing ourselves or positioning ourselves um to be ready for when god answers our prayers and what do i mean by that um let's say um oh for example you know i'm praying for an apartment i'm praying to for god you know like lord I want to start the new chapter in my life, whether it's, you know, it's marriage, whether it's finding a partner, whether it's living independently so that I can prove to whoever nililigaw ko na kaya kong silang ipabuhay, kaya ko silang, um, like, I can be the caretaker, I can be the man of the house to them. Well, then I better start acting like that now. Do you know what I mean? Like... Start living independently. Start showing that you can be that. Start getting your finances in order. Start um, budgeting your money. Like you're praying, you're praying to God for more money. Um, you know, for you to be wealthy. Well, then start carrying yourself and behaving like a wealthy person. Not in spending, huh? Not spending like a wealthy person but rather gearing up for whatever wealth God is going to give you. And how? Well, you're budgeting, right? You're, you're being diligent with your money. You're being faithful in giving your tithes. Um, even before you get that, you're already kind of putting to place the, the kind of mindset, the kind of life that you are expecting God to give you. Does that make sense? Right. Um, so, yeah. So you know, you position yourself to be ready to cat to when you finally receive the answer from God. Right? And that is not just like a physical position, like where what they did, like they physically went to Jerusalem because that's where God said they would be witnesses of or from, but rather, but yeah, like they they physically position themselves. But let's say in our own life how can we position ourselves for god's answered prayer think of james like how would you or how can you position yourself for god's answered prayer mm, like in what ways say like if you're to apply it in your own life Oh, I guess while I wait, you know, like in career wise, God mm -hmm. develop, develop or enhance my skills where, mm -hmm. you know, where it, it applies to the job that I'm trying to apply for. Right. You know, yeah. uh, get more knowledge and, mm -hmm. you know, ask, ask around. 
um, and see like yeah like where you can develop your skills so that you're more of a better um, uh, candidate for uh, the job you're applying for and exactly yeah what else you know try to meditate and have uh, less um, uh, it's, have a better mental health mm-hmm. um, yes, you know try not to stress yourself so much while waiting because uh, you're just gonna be all over the place you, you can miss some opportunities um, because you know you're just stressed out and like oh nothing's happening so far like I'm doing like yeah like you know, don't be in a season of stress because nothing's happening. But, you know, mm-hmm. it's something where you can, you know, develop and be a better person. Yeah. So in your sense, to position yourself is to actually start um, start either learning the skills or sharpening the skills mm-hmm. for that future job that you're praying for, right? Um Which brings me to my second point, because you did raise a good point, is not stressing when we're waiting just because we feel like nothing's happening in our life. The second thing, so number one is to position yourself, right? So to position yourself or to begin begin positioning yourself for God's answered prayer. The second is to be um, patient, is to be patient and persistent while we wait, right? Um, because oftentimes we're, especially in the day and age that we live in now, the Amazon age, the instant noodle age, the fast food age, it is, um, but we, we're very impatient, right? We're very impatient when we don't get what we want right away. And we know that God doesn't adhere to our timelines but he he works on his timelines so while we wait we need to be patient um and so while we wait i think waiting is also a test too right waiting is also a test in the sense where it sees whether or not did we really want how bad do we want what we're praying for Right? How bad do we really want what we're praying for if we don't get it in the timeline that we want? Um, because, and one of the other things too, one of the principles when it comes to like big purchases is before you make a big purchase, you wait like a week or two from the time you think of buying to the to actually buying it because sometimes your mind can change within the week. Like, let's say, like, Lord, you're praying for a new car, or you're praying to buy, like, a new car, or a ah, new car, or, I don't know, some kind of new electronic that's, like, a $1,000. And in the moment when you see it, it's like, ooh, I really want it, like, I really want to buy it. But give it a week, you totally forget about it, and or like you don't want it anymore right so you know there is that buffer where uh it's good to have because sometimes what we pray for last week we kind of don't want it anymore the following week and i guess that page that kind of that waiting time is also for god to test us to see like how bad do you really want it and or how important is it to you so uh, it's important that we be patient in that sense because uh, it it proves to ourselves, but not only to ourselves, but it also proves to God like how persistent and how patient we are in in receiving His promise, in, in receiving His promise. Um, so it's important to be patient, um, and then what else? In verse 14, what else were were they doing? In verse 14, Sabidon. Verse 14, they all joined together constantly in what? Prayer. 
in prayer, along with the women in Mary, the mother of Jesus and his brother. So it's important that, um, that we're always praying and that we're constantly praying. Uh, we have to pray while we wait. First Thessalonians 5.17 says, pray without ceasing, right? Um, and again, it's, it's to show like how, how important things are, you know? Because let's say, yeah, like I said, because our, our, our mind can change from week to week, from minute to minute. So it's important that as we wait, for God's promises. We don't stop praying for what we want. So like Philip, in your case, just because you're still screaming now and it's been months, doesn't mean we stop praying. Yes, we prayed for you last week. We prayed for you the week before that. Tito Willie's prayed for you two weeks in a row. But that doesn't mean we stop. And that doesn't mean we just pray once and then abracadabra, it's gone. What Jesus is trying to teach us here is that we need to keep praying until we receive that answer. If that means months, if that means years, um, we need to patiently wait for God to answer our prayers. And in your case, we will continue praying until God heals you, right? Um, and that's a test of our faith too. Is how much? How like? How much do you want to be healed, and how? much faith you have in God that he will heal you. Um, so, you know, don't don't give up in praying for your healing, Philip. Um, you know, don't be discouraged either when you find it that you've been attending the last service for three weeks, four weeks, five weeks, and get prayed over by multiple pastors, and it still feels like you're still screaming, you're not healed. You know, it's um we have to be patient we have to be patient and we have to be persistent we have to be persistent um while we wait for god um and i think it's also important that that we remain positive that we remain positive while we wait because over time uh, over time, you know, I think when we don't see the answer anytime soon, it's so easy to be discouraged. It's so easy to be discouraged when we see other people prayers get answered, when we see other people move ahead in life. Um, when we begin to compare our life to other people, it's so easy to get discouraged. But um, it's important that we, you know, we remain positive, um, that we remain positive because that positivity or that expectation, the positive attitude that we have is, um, a signal, a signal or an indication that we continue to have faith that God will answer our prayers, um, that God will answer our prayers. So be positive while we wait as, as, as difficult as it can be, um, you know, especially when it's like people our age are, like, you know, they're moving on in life, and here you are still living in your parents' house, um, single and no kid. It's like, well, it can be discouraged. Although I'm not discouraged, like I love my life. <laughs> are you it's fun. fun? Oh my god, it's uh, funny. It's okay. it's fun. Um, what was I going to say? You distracted me, James. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, as, as discouraging as it can be when you start comparing our lives to other people, it's important that we remain positive while we wait for God to answer our prayers. And lastly, uh, so putting ourselves in position, in the right position, isn't the only thing we should do, but if we look in 24, 25, verse 24 and 25, um, um, actually, I think it's more like 23, 23, 24. So they nominated two men, Joseph called Barsabas, also known as Justice, and Matthew. 
Matthias, 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 Matthias. Then they prayed, Lord, do you know everyone's heart? Show us which of these two you have chosen to take over this apostolic ministry, which Judas left to go where he belongs. Then they cast lots, and the lot fell to Matthias, so he was added to the eleven apostles. So it's still, I guess, a continuation of putting themselves, like positioning themselves for God's answers. But like all this to say is like life doesn't stop. Just because you haven't received your answer yet, keep moving forward, right? Keep planning. Keep positioning yourself for God to answer your prayers. Like just because we pray for something. And just because, um, yeah, just and just because God hasn't answered our prayers, doesn't mean that life stops, right? Life should not stop just because we haven't received our prayer yet. We need to keep moving forward, not just ourselves, but life around us keeps moving forward. It needs to be put into position. It needs to be placed in order for us to receive that answered prayer, right? And then, finally, verse one. Uh, chapter 2, verse 1. Chapter 2, verse 1. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to the rest. Came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now they were staying in Jerusalem. Now they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. Right. So finally, after after praying, after being persistent, after placing themselves in Jerusalem, after positioning themselves, not just themselves, but like other people and getting ready for God to answer their prayers, then finally God answered their prayers. Um, and I think the whole act of positioning yourself too is an act of faith. It means you're getting ready for God to answer because you actually believe God is going to answer your prayer. Does that make sense? Um, and so it happened. It happened. And sometimes we don't realize it, but we're already living in our answered prayer. Sometimes we'll pray something like years ago. Although it's kind of, you know, although it's something you prayed years ago and you kind of forgot about it. Sometimes you don't realize that as you were positioning yourself, as you were going through life, because you know that life doesn't stop. Years down the road, weeks, months later, in hindsight, you realize, oh, I'm living in that, the prayer that I was praying for, like months and weeks ago. Like I've received my answer prayer, but sometimes... Um, you forget because, you know, you continue moving on with your life. You know, you've moved on with your life. So, you know, as we wait, it's important that we, number one, we position ourselves for God's answer prayer, that we be patient while we wait for God to answer our prayers, and that we remain positive as we wait for Him. So, um... That's my encouragement and word for tonight. And I'm kind of kind of short, but we have to I have to head to the church for the pastors' congress later. But um, what time is that? It starts at eight. Is it the but, last day today? Yeah, today's the last day. But there are some things that I I want to do here at home first before I go. Um, but yeah, so. You know, I know, Philip, you... Oh, yeah, you have your hand up. Do you want to say something, Philip? Uh, Jonathan, did you talk to Dylan? No? Not yet. But I think he should be back from his vacation now. But Dylan doesn't even live here. You know, right? he lives in Toronto. He's in Toronto? Yeah, he lives in Toronto, so I don't even see him. Oh. But when I see him, when I see him, I'll say Dylan. Add Philip. But again, Philip. Um, all we can do is just send their friend request and it's up to them whether or not they want to accept it. Um, <laughs> what was going to say? Yes. So I know, Philip, you're praying for healing. James, I know that you are 
um, praying for you know what's next in your life and how you can better your how you can better yourself uh, and your relationship in your walk with God. Um, I know during these times of waiting, as I said, like, let's keep moving on with our lives and positioning ourselves for when God answers our prayers. So whether that's um, honing your skills for your new job that you're expecting God to give you, whether that's um, whether that's you know just like continuing on with life, getting yourself ready for God to answer that prayer. Um, yeah, and to remain positive. So for me, what I'm doing as I anticipate or as I wait to finally move out is to start looking for furniture. Start looking at how I want to design my apartments. Um, and stuff like that. Where I'm going to eat and what restaurants do. <laughs> um, you know, start learning how to cook. When I start, when I live alone, I need to start cooking my own meals. So things like that. Right, things like that. Um, <coughs> but other than that, <coughs> um, yeah. So actually, next week, I know because it's just like right now, it's the three of us. But uh, James, did you want to prepare something for next Tuesday? Next Tuesday. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That way you don't get sick of always just hearing me. So. <laughs> Um, what else is there? This Saturday, there's no ceiling, and uh, what's upcoming? Well, I don't know. Nothing that I can think of for this coming weekend, except if it's nice weather outside, go out, go do something fun, go yep. hiking before winter because winter is coming <laughs> winter's coming. I need to get my tires changed I already booked Ooh. they're booking four weeks in advance actually they're booking a month ahead so my appointment is for November um, next thing you know it's December and then it's January and then I'm gone um, oh <clears throat> excuse me Philip, did you want to close us in prayer? Uh, no, 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 thank you. Okay. Um, so you let's close in prayer. Hallelujah. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you so much for this wonderful evening that you've gathered us to remind us um, that as we expect from you, as we pray to you, God, uh, whether it's for healing, whether it's for direction, uh, whatever it is we're praying for, Lord, we pray that you'll continue to remind us to um, position ourselves, oh God, to be ready to receive our answered prayers, to continue to have the patience as we wait for you to answer our prayers and to have the right attitude while we wait, oh God. Lord, we pray that, um, that we will continue to exercise our faith um, and that we will continue to uh, develop and have greater vision and expectation for our lives, that we'll have greater vision and faith, O oh God, in you, um, for we know and we believe that for as long as we have faith in you, um, that you will you know, answer our prayers according to your will. Uh, Lord, we pray um, that you will continue to prepare us um, for uh, and develop us, uh, that you'll prepare us and develop us, oh God, so that we can be faithful with whatever answered prayers you will be giving us, oh God. Uh, Lord, we pray um, for the rest of this evening, for whatever else activities you have planned, uh, may you continue to be with us, guide us, protect us for the rest of this week. Uh, I pray, O oh God, for Philip and his healing. Uh, as we have learned today, Lord, we, may we never stop um, praying, O oh God, until we receive our answers. Lord, we pray for 
healing in Philip's life. We pray for James as he um, steps into another chapter, oh God, of his career and is his walk and his walk with you, oh God and Lord. Um, I pray for RJ. May you continue to be with him, strengthen him, and may you bring him back, uh, Lord, down the right path. And may you continue to use us as well to encourage him and to encourage those around us, oh God, uh, in their walks. And Lord, we pray um, for myself, Lord, as we, as I get ready for whatever great, new, exciting things you also have planned for my life. So Lord, good. may you continue to use each and every one of us, strengthen us, be with us, in Shemaine, and we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. So, Philip, I really hope um, you can join us in person again, um, even if it is just for like an hour, hour and a half. I don't know. Um, I know. I, I'm pretty sure you can. I mean, you you survived online with us without screaming. So I I, it, I can imagine that it will be the same when you are with us. Yeah. If you were here in the house, that you'd be okay. You think so? Yeah. Yeah. See, I, I just can't go on public basis. But you're able to go to the church. Yeah. Um, and you seem to be okay. Do you scream at the church when you're at the church? Yeah. Oh, you do? Oh, okay. Um, well, I don't mind if you scream here at my place. I mean, it's not an apartment, so... You can scream if you want here, but again, it's up to your parents and their comfort level, but um, we'll try something in person or if it's hybrid, then so be it. Um, but let's work towards you being able to attend Bible study in person soon, somehow. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just a quick question. You know, for the guarantor, what did they need to do? Uh, for a passport, I think they just need to sign it. Or I Which think they one? just need to provide uh, like an email address, address and like name and like some details. Is this for like, it's for the new passport, right? Like you're not renewing yeah. it for an actual no. application? It's a new adult passport, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't even think the guarantor needs to sign anything. Oh, you know what? I think they might need to sign the back of your picture. Your passport. The back photo. of the picture. The back of your passport photo. Yes. Um. I don't think they have to sign the actual form, but you'll be able to see it online. I I can't see anything. I just for want to make sure. For a guarantee. Yeah, it's just it's just saying like to sign the photo. That's it, but nothing else. I've been looking into it, but yeah. Did they ask at least the name and how long you've known your guarantor for or your reference for? No, just ask, just saying to be your household member, anyone. It can't uh, be, I thought it can't be a household member. Maybe it it's changed could now. be. I'll look more into it. Because uh, what I'm thinking is going in person. But it's probably... To Service Canada office, or to the passport office? Yeah, the passport office. The one in, uh, is that... Hutchback? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, uh, like Wales. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. I, yeah. Had, I, I got my document. I have okay. the passport photo. Finally, mm -hmm. I have my uh, citizenship. Okay. Uh, so I just need a guarantor. I'm going to have, because my mom, Marcel, needs also to renew his passport. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's all that's, that, that is all that's needed. Yes, Philip. Yeah. Can I can I tell you something? Mm -hmm. So last month my daughter was complaining when when I, when I screaming. Yeah. Well, our neighbors here aren't like apartment neighbors, so I think you should be fine. Because but I, 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 I mean, that's why they, they they can hear. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I know. But um, how come you don't scream when you're online Bible study with us? Oh, it's a, it's because it's a mute button, that's why. Because it's a what? New, new button. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, I guess. Yeah. Uh, but I don't see you screaming when... When... Oh. when anyway, okay. 
I don't see your mouth like I don't see you kind of screaming whenever you're on video camera. But okay, I guess look whatever you're comfortable with, whatever your parents are letting you. But you know, ah, I'm, you see, you see, you see. Um, okay. Um, so that's that's what it's like. Okay. Okay. Well, we'll keep praying for you. And you know what? I I don't know what the doctor has said or. I know you said you've been to the doctor, but um, yeah, we'll keep praying for you. But I, yeah. I also recommend that you keep seeking help professionally as well, if if available or feasible. But yeah, okay. Well, we'll keep you in our prayers, Philip. Have a good night. Yeah. And, um, yeah. If you're gonna go to church, try coming to the East Church on Sunday. Because you can get prayed anywhere. Yeah. You can get prayed anywhere. Your dad, your dad wants you at the Western so you can get prayed by Tito Lili. Okay. Okay. All right. Have a good night, guys. And I'll see bye you bye again. Bye.